This video is an introduction to the acoustic tag system. Topics to be covered, HTI acoustic tags, tag detection and identification, HTI acoustic tag systems, the acoustic tag program in the various data processing phases, and a demonstration of the real-time tag tracking option. So what is an acoustic tag? For HCI acoustic tags, they are comprised of a circuit board, a series of batteries that power the tag, and a ceramic, which is controlled by the circuitry pulses. And when this vibrates, it produces sound pulses that radiate through the water. And basically, that's how an acoustic tag is identified by these sound pulses. For HTI tags, there's various sizes depending on the specimen to be tagged and the duration that the tag needs to be at. Essentially, the tags are all the same except for the type and the number of batteries that are attached to the tag. Here is a smolt that is having a tag surgically implanted in the body cavity of the fish. So how do you detect an acoustic tag? For HTI tags, the period or ping rate that the tag transmits at is precisely controlled so that when it transmits the signal, it waits a specified amount of interval before it transmits that signal again. And this interval, again, is precisely controlled so that in looking at a time distance type of display, when you see a series of signals line up horizontally, this is an indication that it's coming from a specific tag. Here is an example in mark tags. We have a display window that shows signals coming from a specific tag. If you have the vertical axis scaled to the ping rate that the tag is transmitting at, then you should see a series of horizontal lines as we do in this display. This example is showing you a double pulse tag where in addition to the primary signal, a secondary signal is also transmitted at a specified amount of time after the transmit of the primary signal. For example here, this tag is pinging at 5.847 seconds. So every five seconds roughly, the tag pings its primary and secondary signal. And thus we have what we call a double pulse tag. The secondary pulse is also referred to as a subcode. So a tag can be programmed from 1 to 31 possible subcode values. Subcodes allow us to have additional tags in the water when we have a number of tags within a project. It also allows us to assign specific subcodes to groups of specimens that you want to monitor. For example, if you had Chinook versus Sockeye, each species could have its own subcode, which allows for easier identification within the processing software. Since the tag is acoustically based, the pulse from the tag can be affected by various factors. Entrained air, which is very common around hydropower dams, can scatter the pulse coming from the tag. Density differences in water can affect the travel of the pulse. Debris within the water or structures can scatter or block the pulse as it's traveling through the water. And in this photo, we have a picture of a motor from a boat, which causes noise in itself. Here, if we look up at our example here, these vertical bands of signals were actually generated from the motor as it traveled through the hydrophone array. So in a data processing phase, we try to eliminate this kind of signals and only try to process the signals coming directly from the tag. So here is a brief overview of the various systems that HTI has for their acoustic tag products. We have acoustic tag, which runs on a computer and is connected through a network cable to either our model 290 receiver, which is capable of having up to 16 hydrophones connected to it, or our model 291, which runs on DC and can have up to four transducers connected to it. We also have a mobile tag software that runs on a laptop that can be connected to a model 395 mobile system. And here is where we would be able to have capabilities of monitoring absence, presence of a fish in a river system. 
here is some diagrams that give you some idea of the capabilities of the CAG systems based on the number of hydrophones. For our mobile system, again, we were referring to as mobile tag software that you have just one hydrophone that allows you to detect presence absence of a tag within a river system. For a hydrophone array that for in a river system that is too shallow for getting information in terms of the separation between the surface and bottom mounted hydrophones, we can use up to three hydrophones that a fish needs to be detected to calculate an XY position. If the water column is deep enough and you have a separation between your surface and bottom mounted hydrophones, then you are able to calculate an X, Y, and Z position where the fish has to be detected on at least four hydrophones to calculate X, Y, and Z tag positions, as opposed to the 2D tracking where the fish needs to be seen on at least three hydrophones at one time. So here we have a demonstration of the concept of detecting the tag through a hydrophone array. So here we have a fish traveling through our array. And as it travels through, the tag within the fish is pinging at its specified ping rate. And these red symbols indicate when the tag is detected from a specific hydrophone. And as you notice, as it travels through, each hydrophone detects the tag at a slightly different time. So this time difference, in addition to knowing the position of the hydrophones, allows us to calculate an X, Y, and Z position for a tag as it travels through the array. Here we have an actual site on a river where they were evaluating fish traveling down either through the main branch or the side channel. And these symbols represent where the hydrophones were deployed. As the fish is traveling through, each hydrophone is detecting the tags that are in the water. And as we have an example here, as the fish is traveling closer to the hydrophone, which this represents where the hydrophone is, and the further you go down the axis, the further away from the hydrophone that as the fish is approaching, you get this very common curve pattern where it's approaching the hydrophone, it reaches a certain point where it's closest, and then starts traveling away from the hydrophone. So these are very typical patterns as the tag is traveling through an array. Once we gather the data from all these hydrophones, and knowing our hydrophone coordinates, we can then calculate the actual position of the fish within the array. If we know precisely coordinates of our hydrophone, we are then able to calculate submeter resolution, which allows you to monitor, calculate fish swim speed, fish behavior in terms of a deterrent or attractant for surface structures or underwater structures, and also evaluate predation events. In acoustic tag, there's various phases for data processing. So the first phase is essentially recording the raw acoustic tag signals from each hydrophone and storing that to file. That's stored in a raw tag detection file. The next phase is to take those signals and process it so that we're only having the signals coming directly from the tag being stored inside tag detection files, which then are ready for the next process phase where we combine all the data from the hydrophones for a specific tag and calculate a tag position, which is stored in a position tag file. The calculations of the tag position, which is in 2D or 3D, can be done in real time, depending on the project site and the number of tags. But the vast majority of the time, tag position is done during the post-processing phase, especially when you are dealing with hundreds or thousands of tags for a project. So now let's look at an example of a program. Uh, the acoustic tag program, we have a demonstration here of an actual site where we recorded the data that was being collected at that time. We are here again, we have this river system where they were monitoring the fish traveling down either the main branch or the side channel. So here again are our symbols representing where the hydrophones were located and deployed. If you click on the symbol, it tells you in fact what hydrophone number you're at. So this is the georeference map image. Over here, we have various graph windows that will show you the raw signals that the system is collected from each hydrophone as the system is acquiring data. So if we start our demonstration, 
we see here that uh, we've got a number of hydrophones that are set for this specific display. And here we have just one hydrophone, uh, number 213, and down here number 214. So these represent 214 is this hydrophone, and 213 is that hydrophone. So here we have, we immediately see there's a tag that's being detected from the system. And so down in the histogram window, this gives you a frequency distribution based on the period rate of the tag. So if we zoom in, we can see immediately that for the period that we're looking at, 2059, there should be a fish that was detected at that time. And indeed, the system, once it's gathered the data from all the hydrophones, calculated a tag position and displayed it in the georeference map here. And so this is tag 2059. And here again, another interval was used to calculate an additional set of tag positions as it's uh, traveling through the array. And here we see that the tag was observed on hydrophone 213, which is on the main branch of the river, and hydrophone 214 is in the side channel. And we can observe just by looking at the individual hydrophone data that it was last seen on 213 and not 214. So just by the hydrophone information for these two positions, we could tell that the fish most likely traveled down the main branch. Now, the displays set for a specific tag here did not affect the data collection from other tags in the water. In fact, there's another tag that for this demonstration is being monitored and will be tracked here shortly. This is tag 2339. So this tag is pinging at 2.339 seconds for the upcoming display. So when you set a specific display for a certain period for a tag, again, it doesn't affect the overall data collection. It just allows you to view a specific tag within a specific display window. You can set the display to view the signals based on hydrophone color or voltage. That's calculated from the tag signals as it's being received by the hydrophone. So here you can zoom in and out of the main window to look at specific areas of the program as the data is being collected. And here we have our first calculation for a tag 2339 with a subcode of 9. And at a certain set interval, it will also calculate an additional set of XYZ positions for that tag as soon as it gathers enough information from the individual hydrophones to calculate the 3D position. And you can set, again, the displays to view the data from that specific tag. Or you can have it set, for example, here, we already have this display set for this specific tag. And there again, we're seeing this set of primary and secondary signals from this double pulse tag as it travels through the array. So this ends the uh, introduction to the acoustic tag system.